Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 The, 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 the writer said that a virgin shall conceive, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And so today we come on this third Sunday in December to celebrate God giving us his son. Amen. Amen. Born of a virgin, yes. Jesus Christ, our Savior, yes. Emmanuel. We greet you this morning in his name. Those of you who are joining us by social media, we are grateful to God for you being present with us today. We've come to worship God, to glorify him, to seek him, and to praise him, to hear from him. And we invite you to join in with us. Whatever's going on at your home or riding down the road, focus on driving if you're driving. But tune in with the Spirit and join us as we worship together. Amen? Amen. 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 This morning we will, uh, we're going to be led in some praise and worship by our, our praise team. Following that we will have our morning prayer by Deacon Daniel Felder. And the praise team will bless us again. Amen. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. It's good to see all the red and the festive colors and your beautiful faces entering into the house of the Lord. Join in with us as we sing this familiar Christmas carol. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations ride, join the triumph of the sky. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heavenborn Prince of Another chance to get it right, Father. 
And we don't want this day to go by without thanking you for who you are. Not for all the things that you do, but we thank you for who you are, Father. And we just want to praise you, lift you up, and magnify your name. And bless you, Father, because you have blessed us so many times in so many ways. And as we go throughout this Christmas season, let us not forget the reason for this season. We think about giving gifts to our mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers. But let us remember the greatest gift of all, your son, Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to, to lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. And we thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. And let us remember that there are some of us who are not as fortunate as others. So let us remember that sometimes we think about ourselves too much. Let's think about the ones who are not as fortunate as we are. And Father, we just want to thank you, praise you, lift you up, and magnify your name. Forgive us for our sins. Lead us and guide us in the direction that you need us to go to do your will. Because it's all about you and not about us. We thank you. We praise you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Why don't you go tell it on the mountain? Over the hill. Sundays leading up to the birth of Christ. And actually, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent. On next Sunday, we celebrate Christmas. Well, we celebrate Christmas on Sunday. Amen. 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 Which is, which is uh, 
unusual, uh, and and uh, normally uh, Christmas and this year New Year's is on a Sunday. Amen. Amen. And so uh, let me say in advance that I hope on next Sunday that you will choose to be present to celebrate the Lord. To celebrate his birth. Because Christmas is his birthday. And what greater gift, what greater present can you give to Christ than your present? To present yourself to worship him. That's what happened on that first Christmas. They presented themselves and all that they had, their most precious gifts to him. They came and bowed down and worshiped him. So don't get sidetracked uh, next week. I know that we we uh, love to open the Christmas gifts under the tree and, and all of that. But just remember whose birthday it is. Uh, you know, I was raised in a preacher's family. <laughs> I'm a PK. And uh, every Christmas morning, they would have, the ministerial alliance would have a Christmas morning service. And mom and daddy, they would get us up, get us dressed. We would go to that service. Then we would come home and open our gifts after we had worshiped uh, Christ. Amen. So I want to encourage you to give that some thought and to make it your priority, to make Christ your priority. Amen. Amen. Now we worship. We come now to light the candles for uh, today. And uh, our theme is waiting on peace. Are we able to get that on the monitor uh, this morning? Waiting on peace. Okay. Um, having technical difficulties. So, looks like I'm going to have to read your part and my part. Amen. Amen. So, um, I'm going to ask, well, let me just, let me go ahead and begin. Our waiting is almost over. In these last days of Advent, we stand on the threshold of Christmas. It's almost here. We're almost at Christmas. As we have waited, we have experienced the presence of Christ, of the one whom we wait. God's presence brings us peace. But God's promises that he promises that one day the fighting will be over. Those who fight will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will lay down and not take up swords against nations, nor will they train for war anymore. The peacemakers will be blessed indeed. Amen. Amen. There is coming a day when Christ shall come and the world will experience his peace. Let us pray. Uh, let me ask you if you would like the uh, candles. All different ones. Okay. Let us pray. This Advent, Heavenly Father, we, we come to celebrate the birth of Christ, your, your Son, the Prince of Peace. In the midst of all that is going on in the world, in the midst of our routines, in the midst of the rigor that we endure and experience every day, we pause to wait on you. We wait for the coming of Christ again in glory and majesty. We wait with expectant hearts when the plowshares will be laid down, swords will be laid down, and men will be at peace with one another. The animals 
those in the wild and those who are domestic will be at peace with one another. And your kingdom, your government, will rule and reign forever. So we pray for those whose lives and who, those who live in conflict, that you will protect them, those such as those in uh, uh, Ukraine. Protect and keep the violence in various countries. We pray for peace. We pray for the situations and people who cause conflict. Change their hearts. Show us how we can be peacemakers in the midst of our relationships, our families, in the workplace, and in the world. Help us to be blessed as peacemakers. In our Savior Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Let me just take this moment to uh, give a shout out and, and a, a word of thanks and appreciation to uh, church family and to ministries and organizations as we on yesterday uh, shared in the uh, homegoing services of, of two families, uh, the Ellick families and the Gaddis families. Uh, we were blessed to see your response in the way that you uh, turned out and ministered to those particular families. I want to say in particular, I, I want to commend our men our men, amen. Our trustees, amen, and, and deacons. Uh, we praise God for you. Amen. I appreciate you. Amen. It blesses my heart to see men in church working and serving the Lord. Where would we be amen. without men, amen. women? Amen. Where would we be without the men, women? Amen. 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 We appreciate the women and the fine job and service. The men are going to show you how to do this. They're going to show you. This. We appreciate the job that the women uh, uh, perform and the way that we had the kitchen open yesterday and, and they served food to these families and the women did an excellent job in sharing the hospitality and love through the food and, and uh, making, making the families feel so welcome. Come on, man. Amen. Amen. That's the way we do it. Amen. 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 So we praise God for all of you and uh, for what you do. And we want to continue in that, that vein. And Mount Zion, uh, not being boastful or being arrogant or proud, but I believe that this is the best church in this county, in this state, in this country. Amen. Mount Zion Baptist Church of Bowman. Amen. On this planet. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if anybody looking for a church home, we invite you to come and be a part of the Mount, the family here at the Mount. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. At uh, this time, we're going to share our scripture, which is Isaiah 9. Amen. You turn there in your Bibles or your smart device. I'm going to ask that you would stand as we share reading of God's word. Good to see so many of you today Amen. in this place. Amen. I want to continue to pray for those families who are going through bereavement as well. Thank you again. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. New King James Version. For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, 
and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. From, this, from that time forward and even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Amen. Amen. This is Amen. God's word, Amen. the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. This is our, our, our Sunday that we will uh, have our children's Christmas program. Yes. And following the message today, we want you to stay uh, with us for our children will be sharing their uh, Easter recitations and poems, and then we will also share with them. Christmas. Christmas.
Hallelujah. What more blessed thought than God with us? God is with me. Yes, he is, Hallelujah. That's what we ought to wake up and we ought to walk out the door, walk in the job, and saying that God is with me. Amen. Amen. It changes the whole dynamic. It changes the whole situation. But I can say it in, in, in faith that God is with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God with me is more than the majority against me. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Amen. 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 We are, we're grateful again to be here today on this uh, Sunday. And uh, we, we come to share this uh, next message uh, in the uh, names that are presented to us in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, and the sixth verse. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me in prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the generous gift of life. We thank you for the new birth in Christ. We thank you for the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can say you are with us. We praise your name that you have not left us alone, that you are always with us. You're always speaking to us, and you speak to us through your word. We pray this morning that you would open our ears and give us attentive hearts and, and uh, willing receptive spirits to hear what thus saith the Lord. Yes. Encourage us and equip us and strengthen us for the journey that we have ahead. Help us not to be consumed. Help us not to compromise with the culture that we might go along with the flow and just celebrate the lights and the festivities without giving you glory and honor. But this morning, speak through your word that your people might hear. Hide me behind yes. the cross so that you might be glorified. We pray, we ask this in the mighty, powerful, able name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Again, our scripture, uh, Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And I just want to preach and share from that simple name, Everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. There are many names in the Bible by which the Lord Jesus is called and described. The names given to Jesus speak of how he may perform or work a particular act at a particular time in our human experience. A search of the scriptures reveal him as the word. It reveals him as the light. He is the way. The truth, turn it down just a little, and the life. He is the resurrection, and he is our redeemer. Alpha and omega. Beginning and the end. Hallelujah, somebody. He's the first, and he's the last. Yes. Oh, saints in days past might say, Jesus is my rock yes. 
in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of the storm. Somebody say he's my lily in the valley and my bright and morning star. Hallelujah. I found him to be the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Hallelujah. I feel he's a bridge over troubled water and a way out of nowhere. Some of you who have been born in more recent generations may not use those particular terms, but but these that I'm about to mention are no less meaningful and true. You may be able to identify when I say Jesus is my provider who makes a way when my light bill and my rent are due. Do I have a witness? He's my company keeper. On those dark, foggy nights, a morning driving down the Bowman 178, uh, when the deers might peep out and look at me, he's my company keeper. When I get sleepy driving down the road, hallelujah, somebody. He's my, he's my, he, he, he's my friend. When my Facebook friends delete me and folk block me on their cell phone, Jesus is the glue that holds me together when life all around me is falling apart. Hallelujah, somebody. Those are just some of the ways that, that Jesus has shown up in our lives to reveal who he is to us. And because he has revealed himself to us in those names, we know him better. And, 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 and uh, what I want us to do today, because we know him better, we ought to love him better. And we ought to serve him better. And we ought to tell other folk about our Lord. Yes. We've looked at the descriptive names of wonderful, counselor, mighty God. And, and, and in this, this, this book of Isaiah, 740 years before Jesus was born, uh, Isaiah prophesied in, in chapter 6, Verse 14, that a virgin shall conceive. That, that's amazing in itself. Because uh, uh, all of us in here, uh, uh, so we adults. Uh, every woman in here knows that you don't conceive without a man. Come on, somebody. Uh, but, but Isaiah... The Lord speaking through him said a virgin, one who never known a man, will conceive. And, 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 and God gives a gender reveal. He tells you what, 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 what gender is going to be. Uh, he said she will bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So, meaning God with us. And in chapter 9, he said, for the, this, this, unto us a child is born, yeah. and, and a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. You call him everlasting father. Yeah. Isaiah saw a unique child that was going to be born, and at the same time, he saw a son who would be given. Huh? In other words, this child would be both God and man. Uh, uh, a, a, a child would be born, meaning he would be a part of humanity, but a son would be born, would be given, meaning that he would be of divinity. 
in this verse, Isaiah calls Jesus everlasting father. He, he's giving us the complex nature of our Lord Jesus Christ as a mystery that none of us can, can fully understand and appreciate. Look at it. Uh, uh, Isaiah is telling us that Jesus is both a son, but watch this, he is a father. Now that seems to be a contradiction yeah. and, or a paradox, but they really are. Uh, he, he's just declaring the great mystery of Christ's godliness. And, and I, 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 I can hear you asking the question, because I asked the same question. How can Jesus be both the Son and the everlasting Father? Right. When I looked at it, I said, how am I going to preach that, Lord? <laughs> you as the Son and the Father. Because you get into the area of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we, the Bible teaches that they are three different uh, individuals, but they are one. Amen. So how can I say that Jesus is the Father? Mm -hmm. Huh? Come on, Pastor. It's all right. Are y'all following me? Yes. But then Jesus explained it. <laughs> he, he said, look at John 14 verses 7 through 9 where, where I said, if he says to, to, uh, to Thomas, he said, if you had known, to Philip, he said, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And, and from now on, you know him because you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father. And, 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 and it, it'll be sufficient for us. Jesus said, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Let me read, let me read it in the New Living Translation. It says, if Peter, Philip, if you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Just, just show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus said, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show you him so why are you asking me to show him to you? Are y'all getting this? Yeah. Let, 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 some of y'all still look puzzled, but let me explain to you this way. Uh, uh, some years ago, I preached at Zion Baptist Church in Columbia, uh, my home church, where, where, I, where I grew up in my teen years and, and came out of into to ministry. Uh, it's where my father pastored for 20 years. And after, after he passed, I was invited to preach there. And, and after the service, someone came up to me and said, Reverend Goforth, seeing you stand up there today was like seeing your father. <laughs> now, now, what the person was saying was that my appearance, my facial expression, my, my voice tone and intonation and, and, and my mannerisms reminded them of my father who they knew for so long before he died. Are y'all getting this? In other words, when Jesus came to earth and, and was born to be born as a virgin, preaching the kingdom of God, everything about his nature, his character, his holiness, his righteousness revealed his nature, revealed the nature of everlasting Father. Amen. Amen. Now, I, 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 I know we live in a world where 
some folk disdain and dislike the name Father. Even when it comes to God, they, they don't like the name Father. Uh, some people pray and never call him Father. Uh, 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 we live in a world where, where feminist theology says that it's hard to call God Father because of the behavior of earthly fathers. We have sexists uh, who, who, who feel we call, instead of calling God Father, we call, we call him Mother God. Huh? But, but listen, we're not talking about earthly fathers. We're talking about everlasting father. And, and if he's your father and you are his child, then that's good news. I said that's good news. That's good news. Well, why, why, Pastor? Why is it good news? First of all, it's good news because everlasting father is the one who always provides. Hallelujah. He's the one who always provides. That's point number one. That, that means that he's got you covered from the conception of life to the conclusion of life. He, he's got you covered. He provides from the cradle to the crept. He provides from delivery to death. He's got you covered because Jesus provides. Now, 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 we, we may not, he may not, he may not give us everything that we want. But everlasting Father has been providing everything we need. Do I have a witness? In, in, in fact, if he gave us everything we wanted, uh, we, we might mess ourselves up. Because uh, children don't all know or always know what they what they, they they're asking for. Am I right about it? Uh, see, see, we, we ask for a whole lot. When we look, we ask for a whole lot. Turn the heat down just a little bit. We ask for a whole lot of things when we when we were children. But but I'm glad we, we didn't get everything we asked for. <laughs> I, I was talking to somebody, we were talking at work this week about some of the things that we got for Christmas. You know, if you got one of those, those packages wrapped up and it was soft, you, you, you know you got a pair of socks. <laughs> uh, you got some, some new underwear. <laughs> huh? uh, we, we, get, we get two shoes uh, uh, tennis shoes probably two times a year. Start of school Amen. and at Christmas. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. The PF kids and the Chuck Taylors. We, we, we get some. And, 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 and we always got a stocking. Uh huh. Had candy in it, the hard rock candy in it. It had walnuts and Brazil nuts. Man, those were some of the hardest things. The crack. But we were happy. We were happy on Christmas. Amen, somebody. Uh, Jesus gives us what we need the most. He, forgive, he gives us forgiveness. He gives us, he gives us salvation. Hallelujah. But 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 think about think about all the time you needed something, and the everlasting father some way or another came through and provided it right on time. Yeah. Think about it. And then if you think about it, you ought to let out a shout because the Lord was watching over you and providing what you need. And every time I think about how good the Lord has been to me, make me want to run make me want to shout make me want to holler because he's been so good when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord thank you 
for providing what I need. The everlasting Father provides, and He provides in some of the strangest places. Remember how the children of Israel were wandering around in the wilderness, and they were going, they were wondering, how are we going to drink some water? How are we going to uh, eat? And, 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 and look what God did. He provided water from a rock. Hallelujah, somebody. And when they said, well, we need something more than water. We want something to eat. God uh, went into his heavenly kitchen and whipped up some whatchamacallit. That's what it was, some whatchamacallit. The Bible calls it manna. And they ate and were satisfied. I'm talking about the everlasting Father who will provide for us when we're in the wilderness of life. Do I have a witness? He'll be in his divine kitchen and you need a blessing and you don't know where it's coming from and he'll whip up a heavenly recipe and he'll put it on the table and you can eat it right in the midst of your wilderness in front of your enemies. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, he provides and that's what he did one Friday evening when he was in the upper room with his disciples before he was crucified. What did he do? He, 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 he took some bread and he said, this is my body which is broken for you and, and this is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins. In other words, my body and my blood is my provision for you at the cross. I said at the cross. His blood came streaming down. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. That was my provision. That's what I needed. Hallelujah, somebody. I could stay there talking about everlasting Father providing, but let me talk to you about the everlasting Father's protection. A good father wants to protect and look out for his child. He's like a satellite. He, he, he's tall most times and he's always looking out. He, he, a satellite shows you where the enemy is. Uh, they provide pictures and perceptions that the soldiers on the ground cannot see. And it keeps them from being ambushed and trapped. But, but everlasting father is better than a satellite. But he, because he knows that there are dangers on our life's journey that we as his children don't know anything about. And he's there to protect his children. Listen, he protects us from situations that are getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. We can see them coming. Y'all, you know what I'm talking about? The imminent car crash. You get ready to have an accident, but the Lord calls you to put your foot on the brake. At just the right time. Yeah. Uh, you, you thought it was you, but the Lord Amen. calls you to see it yeah. and move your foot. Uh, he, 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 he protects us from the fool and the shady folk we might get involved with. Has the Lord done that for you? You almost bought it. You almost got connected with that, that group and got connected with that pyramid. But the Lord. You, you were at the party and something jumped off. Somebody started shooting. But the Lord. He kept you. You were driving home. Don't tell nobody, but you were liberated. Uh -huh. 
You had a little something, something. And you almost killed yourself running off the road. But he kept you and protected you. The deer jumps out. But he jumps over your car. Or even if you hit your car, he didn't cause you to run in the ditch and kill yourself. He provides, he protects you. He, 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 listen. You got the church. You got on the church. You drove up to the church now. And, and God reminded you yeah. that you left the eye on the stove. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you slipped. Jesus. You fell. You twisted your ankle. Mm. While you were laying there saying, ouch. You realized that you could have broke your ankle. Yeah. Does anybody know that everlasting Father protects us from danger seen? And I haven't even mentioned the things we don't even know about that he protects us from. The schemes that we don't know about that's against us. The, the, the scams that folk have trying to get us. The, the, the sickness that we could be sick with. COVID-19 or whatever a viral disease all around us. You, you don't know. He's keeping us protected from untold suffering. You, you think you're suffering now, but it could be so much worse. He kept you from financial disaster. Kept you from psychotic relationships. You thought he was Mr. Right, uh, Miss Right, but you found out later they were crazy as a doorbell. <laughs> Everlasting Father protected us, and we learned from the old folks to say it this way He kept me from danger seen and unseen. And if you know it, you ought to shout, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for protecting me. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, because, because some of us would be in the jailhouse if the Lord hadn't protected us. So, some of us would be in the crack house if it wasn't for the Lord. We'd be in the insane house. That's the crazy house. We, we, we'd be in the poor house. Some of us wouldn't even have no house. If it wasn't, for everlasting father. A five-year-old girl was walking unsuspectedly along and a, and a dog showed up and started chasing her. She was, she was crying and, and screaming and, and she began to run as fast as her little feet and legs would, would take her. She, she ran to her grandfather and she was yelling, Papa, 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 I sound like Layla. Papa, Papa, Papa. And her and and grandfather heard her and he ran out and he picked her up and put her in the arms and she was crying and yelling and screaming. But when he picked her up, the dog saw Papa. <laughs> and he stopped barking. <laughs> he stopped right in his tracks. And the little girl turned around and looked at the dog. She looked back at Papa and she looked at the dog and she said, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> And when you know everlasting Father, the one who provides, the one who protects, anybody in here know you can look at trouble, you can look at danger, and you can say, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. He provides. And he protects. But then lastly, he, everlasting Father, is present. He, he, he's present. We live in a time marked by an epidemic of absentee fathers. A, a high percentage of children grow up in homes where dad is not there. And, and, and even when dad is there, dad is not there. And so many children grow up with a father vacuum in their heart. But 
You need to understand something. Whether dad is there or not, no man can feel the father vacuum in your heart. Only everlasting father can meet your deepest and true need. The best thing that earthly fathers can do is point our children to the everlasting father by our faith and by our flow, by our model. We can only point our children to the everlasting father because everlasting father, Jesus, he provides, he protects, and he's always present. Oh, Hallelujah, somebody. And what I love about Everlasting Father is that he's a forever father. See, some of us have forever friends, but he's a forever father. Do you hear me? He's a forever father. And that's important. It's important to me because I had an earthly father. Ah. Uh, but in 1994, mm -hmm. God called him home. Yeah. And he wasn't a forever father. Mm -hmm. He was just an earthly father. Yeah. Now, I am a father yeah. to my children. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a forever father. Because yeah. one of these old days, yeah. I have to leave this yeah. planet. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. But I'm glad. I said, I'm glad that there's an everlasting father, and he will be there. He'll never leave you. Well, no matter what come, through good or bad, through the up and down, he's forever with us. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why he came that first Christmas. He came to be with us. So that we could be with him. He's not only everlasting father who provides. He's not only everlasting father who protects. But he's everlasting father who is present with us. In fact, listen, I close with it. In fact, his presence with us. Is his present to us. Yeah. <laughs> his presence with us. Yeah. Is his presence to us. Yeah. He is. Present. Yeah. And the present. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's wonderful. Yes. Counselor. Yes. Mighty God. Oh, yes, Everlasting Father. Yeah. Prince of Peace. As the praise team sang, he's Emmanuel. God with us. And the only proper response to a God like that, only proper response to a Savior like that, only proper response to a present like that, to a father like that, is that we ought to worship him. We ought to praise him. We ought to love him and adore him. We ought to bow down before him. We ought to come to him. Come to him for salvation. Come to him for the forgiveness of your sin. Come to him for new life. My wife shared with me just, I believe it was yesterday. She heard uh, someone, a minister on the radio, who presented a, a, a message that said that, that Christmas was about sin. Amen. It was about sin. See, we, 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 we focus on 
the gift and the baby and the manger. But really, Christmas was about sin. He came because of sin. Oh, 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 Calvary is about sin. He died and nailed, his blood came down for our sin. But the cradle was about sin. It was a fulfillment of Genesis 3.15 that, that, that God would send the Redeemer who the serpent would bite his heel, but he would crush the serpent's head. He would be the conqueror of sin. The Bible says that the payment for sin is death. When you sin, there's a payment. When you do wrong, there's a payment. But Jesus came. He wasn't like us. He, he was born of a virgin. He wasn't born with Adam's blood. He was born of the Holy Spirit. He, he lived a sinless life, which made him the perfect sacrifice on the cross to pay for our sin. Moses couldn't do it. Joshua couldn't do it. Abraham couldn't do it. None of the prophets could do it. Only Jesus. God's only begotten son who was a sinless, perfect lamb of God. Yes, yes, yes. Lived a sinless life. Mm -hmm. Then he died. Mm -hmm. For you. Yes. 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 For me. Yes. He died for us. Yes. Even while we were yet yes. knuckleheads. Yes. And sinners. Yes. Thinking we know. Mm. I'm going to enjoy my life. My life. Even while we were acting stupid. He died. To make a way for us. So that we would not perish. So that we wouldn't have to die and go to an eternal hell. And the Bible says. That whosoever. That you can put your name there. Yes. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord yes. shall be saved. Yes. What better gift mm. to give to your father than your life given yes. your heart? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God for the everlasting yes. Father. Yes. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, we praise you and we thank you for who you are. Thank you for revealing yourself as our everlasting Father. Thank you that you are a provider. You are our provider. You are our protector and that you are always present with us. We pray that this season, this day, that we will proclaim your name. That we will proclaim that you are Lord. You are King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. Lord, I pray for the person today who does not know you and does not, does not have a relationship with you. They know about you, but they have not trusted you with their most precious gift their heart, their soul. Mm. I pray now that they realize the state and condition mm. that they are in, that they are sinners. Mm -hmm. They're lost. And without you, life is meaningless. I pray that they would confess their sins. They would repent and turn from them and call and ask you to be their Lord and their Savior. Save them today. We thank you that your love is so great that it covers our sins. Thank you that your love is unconditional. Thank you that you're able to save us from the guttermost to the uttermost. So save them today. Make them brand new. 
Bring them into your family and your kingdom and help them to live for you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this word. Let us hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. We praise you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God glory. Give God the praise. And be in our everlasting Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. So grateful today for you being here with us, all you who are with us and um, uh, social media, we thank you for your presence today. Amen. Amen. And um, we invite you to join us again at any time for uh, worship. We invite you to come to 707 Arista Road, Bowman, South Carolina, where we are people who love God and are striving to serve God. We will welcome your fellowship, and if you desire a church home, yes. consider, pray about it, and we will welcome you to join us. God bless you and keep you until the next time. This has been a word from the mouth. Amen.